for those of you that are tuning in live, welcome. I am Coach Clay Banks, and this teaching is coming to you live from Clay Banks Studio International, just over the hill from Hollywood. And uh, excited to have you here. I am going to do a wrap-up for you guys on the intention teaching with one simple deduced definition to make it easy for you to apply everything that came down. So when you look at seminars that you've been to or intensives that you've been to, workshops, anything like that that you've been to, you get flooded and inundated with information. Does everybody agree? Say yeah. 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 Okay. You guys know that. You just get inundated. And then there's all these statistics and reports about how much information is actually retained. Any guesses? Guesses? We talked about it. It's 10%. Two. Or 15. Eight percent. We have to keep pushing that. Yeah. Well, you know, they say 98% of all statistics are made up by public speakers in the moment, including that one. Okay. Uh, how do we ever really know? I mean, how do we ever really know? But what I've heard more often than not is actually less than 10%. For the average person, the average mind, that we're actually only retaining maybe 10%. I've heard 2%. I've heard more than 10%. But the point being is we generally are not going to retain everything. What you will retain is what you will write down and what you will study and make a point of assimilating. So you sitting in a seminar and receiving information and thinking you're going to become whatever that seminar talker is talking about is like walking into McDonald's and, and turning into a, a bag of french fries. It, it's not going to happen. You know, you have to go to work at it. So this teaching on intention is so powerful and I've given you so much information on intentionality why it's important, what it's about, how to access it, what it's not. And for those of you that might be just catching this teaching now for the first time, if you would like to go through this intensive, you can find it on our socials, claybankstudio.com. You can find it on our YouTube channel. You can find it on Instagram and Facebook. I believe all the teachings have been posted there. And you can build your understanding of the importance of intention and how it separates your acting from being a non-intentional actor. It'll actually make you a better functioning human being by living your life with more intention as opposed to not being intentional. So I'm not going to go back and teach the series again. I'm going to give you one specific and poignant definition that I have elected to, well, basically define the whole teaching on intention with this one final definition for you to assimilate, okay? I'm going to mix it with actor choices. You know, your whole thing about making choices, making choices, making choices. Over the years, I found out that there's, it's hard-pressed to find an acting coach or an acting book that is not at some point going to discuss making choices. But yet, I have found that a lot of actors really don't understand what that means. I almost taught an entire two-hour teaching at sag After headquarters on choices. What choices are all about. And Because and, it's easy to just go, oh yeah, choices. Oh, choices, oh, choices, oh, choices. Well, what is that? What does that really, really mean? And if you really want to learn what something really, really means, You've got to make a point out of taking it to a study. And taking it to a study is when you will start off like doing a word search. What are the definitions of this word to choose? You could go back to the original, like in the Greek. Where did this word actually come from? What does it mean? What is it trying to say? How do I make it work for you really to get a handle on that? You guys ever notice that you or friends or family members will become medical experts in anything that becomes a real problem for you. you. Ever notice that? Like if you get this rash that comes out of nowhere and you can't get rid of it, all of a sudden after months you are now the genius in rashes and you know everything there is. Why? Because you don't want it there. You want to heal yourself of it. 
you know, somebody that's going through cancer, and then they, 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 they become like this doctor in, in, in cancer and understanding how, you know, to prevent it and cure it and all this other stuff. You, you just become really great at it. Why? Because it's got your attention to the point where you just be, have become obsessed with wanting to know as much as you can about it. Well, shouldn't you feel that way about anything that's important to you? I mean, that's what people that really excel at things do. They don't just sit around and go from class to class and workshop to workshop. They actually press in. And that's why I teach thematically. I'll say, well, we're, this month we're teaching on this. This showcase is going to be about this. You know, and it's still crazy because even when you guys know that we do thematic showcases, right, you'll still try to squeeze in a scene that has absolutely nothing to do with the theme. I'm like, well, what, what part of this don't you understand? This is this the, the showcase that's coming up is on precision. It's got to be quick switch banter and precision and precise. Everything you do, and, you know, I, we've got... Uh, people that want to play music, and I say I, the music has to, it has to be precision. It has to be very specific and intentional, and there has to have a display and a show of precision involved in it, or it's, uh, it can't make the showcase. I want to sing this song. Where's the precision in the song? I mean, there needs to be precision in it. That's the theme. So whatever the theme is, it forces you to focus on that one theme, on that one point. Okay? And this whole deal on intention is to bring your attention to intention to gain attention. See how I put the influx on that, call back and make that switch work there? Okay. That was precision. Um, so choices. What is up with choices? I feel like a Seinfeld episode. What's the deal with choices? Right? When you're making a choice, it ties in with your intention to carry that choice out. And here's where, here's where it's driving home for you. I don't want you guys getting out pens and pants to write the pads to write this down. I want you to get out tattoo ink. And I want you to tattoo this on the inside of your eyelids backwards. So every time you blink, you will be reminded of it. That's how important it is. No. I want to hire the Sopranos to beat them up with a club hammer. Get specific about this. This is what I want you guys to, to get. All right? When you're making choices and you're working with intention, here's your definition. It's what you have decided that that word, phrase, line, paragraph, it's what you have decided to make important for you. When you're reading a line of dialogue, you need to make the choice. What am I deciding this means to me? Say this after me. What am I deciding that this means to me? There's your answer. You need to answer that question for everything that you work on. There's a line of dialogue. Well, fire truck ran over the dog. What am I deciding that that line means to me? Not just, oh, the fire truck ran over the dog. I have to make a decision on what it means to me. That's what's called making a choice. And then by making that choice on that, you are now operating with intention because you're not just saying the line. That's it. The whole month of intention boils up to that piece of execution. Why? Because after teaching this and watching uh, you guys and my students week after week going, they're not really getting it. I don't think they really understand this. I said, I'm teaching my butt off here. I'm doing everything besides like bringing in dancing people to display this thing. I don't know where that came from, but whatever. Uh, I had to give a hard-pressed thought to it this week and go, what does it really mean? How do you give them a tool so you can say, yes, here's a tool. Here's a microphone. This is a tool. It gets the job done. It's amplifying my voice. 
This is a watch. It's a tool. It's getting the job done. It's tangible. What's the tangible thing that you guys should have? And if you're not writing this down, I guarantee you're not going to remember it later. You should be writing this down, and you should be tattooing this on the inside of your eyeballs backwards so every time you blink, you're remembering it. That's how important this is to you, because every place you do not do this, you're going to have a dead spot in your work. And it's easy to not have a dead spot. So I want to show you two visual illustrations. There are two canvases on a wall. And the canvases are hung four feet off the ground. Canvas A, canvas B. Two people are in front of the canvas with buckets of paint. And their task is to cover the entire white canvas with the blue paint. That's it. That's their job. One person goes, picks up the paint, covers the paint canvas, it's all blue. The other person is blind. They don't have any visual capabilities. So when they paint on the canvas, it's kind of hard pressed for them to know whether or not they've actually covered the whole canvas. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be more difficult because they don't know if there's any white coming through. This person, with all fully functions, on canvas A, can see the whole canvas is blue. This person does not have a clear understanding on whether the whole canvas is blue or not. When you're working, you either have a clear understanding that you are given meaning to everything that you're saying, or you got holes in your, in your, in your work. Well, how do you cover the holes on this blue canvas? You go back and you tell the person, okay, right here, this needs more paint, this needs more paint, this needs more paint, and you'll get it. So what I'm saying is, do you have meaning here? Do you have meaning here? Do you have meaning here? Simply by doing this, deciding for you as the character, what am I deciding this means to me? That will cause you to make a choice, and it will cause you to move with intention, with understanding that one simple definition. I would write a book with one page in it, with that one phrase on it, if I felt I could sell it. This will answer all. Could you imagine that? Here's a book. I'm going to give you a book, and the title is The Answer to All Your Acting Problems by Coach Clay Banks, Guaranteed or Your Money Back. Just read it can be read in one sitting. And you buy the book on Amazon, you pay your 19 bucks for the book, you open it up, it has one page and one line on it. What are you gonna do? I got ripped off. What's this crap? Are you kidding me? Charging me 20 bucks for one, one line? In this world of free information? How could this person do this? I'm returning the book. And I'm writing a bad review. <laughs> but on the other side of town, somebody went, I trust this coach. I'm going to read this line. And if there's only one line here, there must be power in it. And I want to get the power out of it. What am I deciding this means to me? That means I and making a decision on a meaning of intent for me as a human or as a character. It will revolutionize your acting and you don't even have to go to Amazon. I just gave it to you. Now, the hard part. On the other side of that page, it's going to say, now you got to do the work. Oh my gosh, I'm doing a whole monologue, a whole page. I'm doing a two-minute monologue. There's got to be a hundred sentences on the page. How many of these sentences do I have to do it with? Only the ones you want covered with paint. Otherwise, they're, it's empty canvas, not saying anything. What am I deciding 
this means to me. Say it again. Why am I deciding this means to me? That's it. And thank you, Zoomers, all you Zoomers out there for contributing as well, and all you guys that are watching later. Somehow, I will be hearing that. I don't know if that's true or not. That's it, guys. That's about it. I'm not going to go any further with the teaching than that. That's what I want to drive this home with. One simple bullet point to wrap up a very intense topic. Look, Larry Moss, one of, if not the greatest acting coaches alive today, wrote an entire book called Intent to Live. It's his acting book. There's a plug for you, Larry, but no problem, because Larry's my coach. <laughs> His whole book's written about intent to live. My whole teaching these past four or five weeks has been on intention. I've been getting testimonials from many of you guys talking about how it's changing your life. I had people say to me, if I had known this when I was younger, it would have changed my life. I mean, I'm getting all kind of crazy testimonials talking about how many times people have done things without really having intention on it. And then when you go back and you do something with intention, it changes everything. And sometimes in an artist adventure, you can actually stop and isolate doing one thing is what we're going to do right now, where you're doing one thing with full intention. Because when you watch major movies, like we just watched that movie last night. We, at time of taping, uh, we just saw Dune on the big huge screen with the fancy chairs and a beautiful theater it was awesome sound was great picture was great all oh, was great watching this big action movie dune which first of all by the way was beautifully shot i mean the whole thing's just a work of art it's just every frame is just gorgeous and you go when you're looking at that and any any photographer any dp any artist is, is going to see that because you're going to see how much intentionality there is in the detail Everything's created, and whether it's real or it's done with CGI and you know green screen or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's still everything's held accountable to work. Every frame, every frame. Now, somebody do the math for me. Any mathematicians here? If you have a two-hour movie, and there are sixty seconds in a minute. And there's 120 minutes. That's 60 times 120. Somebody want to do that math? I don't know. I'm up here talking. I'm not really calculating math right now. Somebody figure that out. Keep your calculator out. I want you to figure that out. This was actually a three-hour movie, though, I think. What's the total running time of Dune? Three hours? Okay, let's say Dune was three hours. Okay? That's 180 minutes. So in 180 minutes, how many seconds are there in 180 minutes? There's 60 seconds per minute, so 60 times 180. What's that number? Come on, guys. You got calculators? 10,800 10, seconds. Times that by 30. I'll just be conservative. They were probably shooting at greater than 30 frames a second, but let's say they were shooting at 30 frames a second. At times 30, what is the number? 324,000 photographs we looked at last night. 324,000 frames in that movie. 324,000 works of art. All precision. Precision, precision, precision. Held accountable detailed, done with intention. So when you as the performer, when you as the actor are acting and you just go, it's like, how many of those frames are you holding accountable? I'm holding you accountable in this exercise to one task with total accountability. Now, just going to throw this away. I wasn't going to talk about this, but just for the heck of it. There are film festivals out there all all kinds of film festivals, and a lot of film festivals. In my experience, most film festivals, short film festivals,
festivals, you, you come in at about 10 minutes. A 10 minute film festival is pretty, pretty common. But then there are these, these faster speed competitions where you have to make a film in 48 hours. We have a film festival here in Hollywood, a 24 hour film festival. I conduct a one minute monologue contest. Well, I had a friend, only because I haven't seen him in years, 10 years ago, had the one second film festival. He did the one second film festival. And basically what it was, was you needed to shoot your movie and pull out one frame and display one frame. So it was just a fun twist on Cinematic Art Showcase. And it was a one second film festival. And, and, and so it was one frame. That was 324,000 frames in a three hour movie. So guys, that's art that people will pay for. That's attention that you will get when you put that type of, of, of focus on something. So this whole thing is going to conclude right now with you doing one thing with an intention. Now, you know, last week I busted you guys because I asked you to do one thing and you guys were doing five, eight, 12 things. And I'm like, I don't want five, 12, eight things. I want one thing. One thing. Okay. So, and for those of you guys that are watching uh, after time of taping, or even if you're watching right now, if you want to do the exercise, you can do the exercise on your own, and this is how it, it, it is. You're just going to pick one simple task, one, one, one simple task. So you might say, here's, here's where people mess this up. They say, well, okay, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee. Okay, so what they do is they get the cup, they take the coffee, they pour the coffee in the cup, then they add the creamer, they stir it up, and they take the cup. I go, you've just done 10 things. <laughs> I just want one. I want one of those things. I want you to isolate one thing. Put the cup down. That would be the one thing. Well, you would have to grab the cup before you put it down. So grabbing the cup would actually be one thing. But if you really want to break the intention down, if you want to get really micro nano nuts, it'd be, I'm going to think about grabbing the cup. So how small are we going to work? I know some of you are like, what's that mean? You know, it's like, well, your capacity to be able to understand this stuff. How much can you slow yourself down to specifics in this world of generalities? And then there's the person that goes, huh, what, you want me to drink coffee? <laughs> it's like, okay, forget it. You go do something else. <laughs> Why? Because that's where the excellence comes in. That's where the brilliance comes in. The more you can slow it down. So guys like me, and believe me, I'm not the only one, can sit there in the movie theater when somebody just reaches over and grabs something and goes, oh, look at how she grabbed that. And you go, what the hell are you talking about? There were no explosions. There were no car crashes. I know, you're in a different category. You're going to get what you get. You're going to get what you get. I mean, that's all there is to it. You, you're, you, you have a certain cap capacity to receive what I'm saying. And all of you have a different capacity for this. Some of you are like, when's he going to quit talking so I can act? And some of you are like, oh my gosh, go deeper, coach. Go deeper, go deeper. I'm right there with you. <laughs> you know, whatever. Wherever you are in that spectrum, we're all at that. That's why Viola Spolin, the grandmother of improvisational development, says that our talent is not based on our experiences, but our capacity to experience. What are you able to take in? Or are you just there? Keep increasing your capacity by doing these kind of exercises. Do one thing. Set an end point. I am going to grab the coffee cup. Great. There's your, there's your, that's it. You're grabbing the coffee cup. End point, looking at the coffee cup, approaching the coffee cup, actually grabbing the coffee cup. Out point, after I've grabbed the coffee cup. Oh, but I would have lifted it to my mouth. That's another action. In point, out point. Hold yourself accountable to what you're doing in between this in point and out point. Then you increase it to lifting up the coffee cup. Then how does the coffee cup go on your mouth? 
Then how do you tilt back? And how do you pour it? Then do, how do you drink it? How do you swallow? What's the moment after the swallow? What do you do with the cup now? Put the cup back down, release the cup, stop. Now, that was a lot. How can I keep turning this volume down and it still keep going? I don't. You watched me. You saw me just turn the volume down. I don't get this thing. Okay. Um, each one of those things is something because then when you do the work and now it becomes art. These are all pictures being taken. And when you do it, and you do it with that kind of intention, I'm so stinking interesting, we won't be able to take our eyes off of you. And that's what you want. Ah, it was a universal hug for all of you. All right. So the definition. What am I deciding this means to me? as the character. What am I deciding this means to me on everything that you do? And when you make that decision, then the next part is, well, what type of decisions am I going to make? That's another teaching on choices, but we'll, uh, we'll cover that in another.